that God's glory must manifest in our lives so that the glory of the Lord will be seen in us so that the glory of the Lord will make us to shine so that the glory of the Lord will bring good success to us so that the glory of the Lord will make us to triumph in situations so that the glory of the Lord will make us to thrive in life so that the glory of God will make us to be distinguished you need to be distinguished as a child of God Lord manifest your glory in my life manifest your glory in my life almighty God let your glory manifest in me let your glory manifest in me oh God let your glory manifest in my undertaking in my ministry and everything that I do in the name of Jesus there may be a businessman a businesswoman here ask that the glory of God will come on your business today in the name of Jesus Christ all that you do uh, in your in your employment in every area ask that the glory of the Lord be manifested in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Lord we praise you Lord in Jesus name we are praying Heavenly Father take all glory and praise and honor we ask that you send your word into us today O Lord let your word, O God Almighty Father, bring light and understanding to our heart. Let your word, Almighty Father, change somebody's story today. Let your word encourage, O God, and empower somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory and honor we give to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And you may sit down. Please, God bless you. God bless you. We appreciate Pastor Richard and Pastor Gladys. Thank you for this privilege I have to come uh, and bring the word of God to us today. May God bless you and prosper your ministry more and more in Jesus' name. I was really blessed by the praise and worship. Very wonderful. And this recitation. Yeah, the name. You know, one day you see the children will be able to recite Psalm 119. You know, that's the longest psalm, isn't it? Yeah. And they will be saying here, you'll be wondering how, how. Yeah, let them start from somewhere. Amen. It's good to see all of you. Amen. Praise God. Please open your Bible to the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. I'm going to read a few interpretations of that. And then we, we, we go into, into other connections of the word. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the King James Version says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The New Century Version says, we have small troubles for a while now, you know, but they are helping us to gain an eternal glory that is much greater than the trouble. I mean, look at the, the Passion Translation. It says, we view our slight, short-slighted troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as the substance that produced for us an eternal weight, glory, far beyond all comparison. The Amplified Classic says, for our light momentary affliction, this slight distress of the passing hour, is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure excessively surpassing all comparison and all calculations a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease I don't know if you understand what I'm reading here. Look at the free Bible version here. It says, these trivial troubles we have only last for a little while, but they produce for us an ever-increasing degree of glory. Now, what is glory? You might ask me right now. So what is glory? Before we, before we go into nitty-gritty of the whole thing. Glory means the dignity of God in our lives. Look, glory. You know, that's why we pray earlier, let your glory manifest in me. It's the dignity of God in our lives. You see, when God shows up everywhere, you will know that God is there, correct? So when the God, glory of God is upon you and I, wherever you find yourself, you just see God there. 
the dignity of God that makes you to be distinguished, the dignity of God that makes you to be recognized, the dignity of God that makes you to be preferred. That is what glory is, that dignity in us. You see, many people get to certain places today and they just commonize them. From today, nobody will be able to commonize you again. Because that glory will distinguish you, make you to be preferred. It's a dignity, a dignity that comes from God. Not the dignity that people put on you. You see, when people put dignity on you, they can remove it, you know that. But when God put a dignity on you, my God, everywhere you go as his representative, you're highly honored, you're highly favored, you're highly preferred. I mean, you are, you are, you are distinguished and set apart. Glory also means honor. The honor, the honor. Honor is important in the life of a child of God. That's why God says, "Did thou honor me, I will honor. Honor is important in everything that you do as a child of God. It doesn't matter what, what the situation is. Honor is important. Honor is important. Honor is that prerequisite that make you to be separated and be given more than others. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1. If you read from verse 8 to 9, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, he said, you love righteous. He said, that throne, O God, is forever. And the scepter of your kingdom, the scepter, is an instrument of royalty. It's an instrument for you as a king and a, and a queen. He said, the scepter of your kingdom is of righteousness. He said, you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. Therefore, the Lord your God, look at it now, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. That is a honor. Look at that. The honor. From today, I pray the honor of God upon your life. Amen. The glory brings that honor upon you everywhere. Even in traffic. You just see traffic stopping for you. Can you imagine that? I mean, I was traveling to a city some time ago in a country. And uh, our international flight was late. At the time we got our luggage, it was late. So the, the connecting flight, uh, you know, they said, well, they've closed the desk and everything. I've not even bought a ticket. You know, I was rolling the suitcase down, was running down. They said, no, look and see the tarmac there, the plane is going. I mean, I actually saw it. They said, well, that's it because you, you know, you are late. I said, but I need to get to that city now. And I'm going to so and so. They said, who again did you say you are going to see? I said, so so and so I'm going to see. My God, I've never seen that kind of honor in my life. They brought that truck out, drove it to the tarmac, asked me to, they, I never knew they had some back door somewhere there. You never really go through a general door. Then they go open a back door there. They said, come through this door. And they were taking my suitcases and they drove, they put me in the truck and we were driving to the tarmac. I've never seen that in my life. And they said, wait, wait. They were doing this to the pilot that is going to so and so and so and so and so and so. The plane stopped. I was shocked my life. I've not even bought a ticket. I've not even paid for anything. They can't open the belly of the thing again to put my luggage there. They have to carry my luggage inside the plane. And that's where they are. They took the money and I sat down. And I breathed a good sign of relief. I said, this is good. That's honor. That's what glory brings. Glory. 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 Have you, have you felt this honor somewhere? Whatever it is, by this anointing of this glory today, may things will change around our lives. Yeah. Honor is coming your way in Jesus' name. Yeah. What is glory again? Glory means a beacon of respect and pleasure of God upon you. A beacon of respect and, 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 and pleasure when God's respect rest upon you my God there's no disfavor again that respect will open door for you anywhere it's a glory of God it's a glory of God 
It's the glory of God. It's the glory of God. That boy said, Pastor, I'm going for my visa. You know, I want to go and ask for a two uh, extension in my visa so I can finish my master's and stuff like that. I mean, the thing was delayed and etc. So he needed two years, you know, on his visa. And he said, no, let's pray so you can pray. You know, I said, there's no need to pray. Just go. This is what the Bible says. Proverbs 21, verse 1. It said, the art of the king is in the hands of the Lord and he directs it the way he pleases. That's God, not you now, not me, nobody, only God can do that. And I said, just go, everything will be fine. He said, I said, I said yes, well, what, what more? I mean, we're talking of glory, a beacon of respect and pleasure here. He got to the place. They asked him to took his passport. They asked him to sit outside. Five minutes after, they called him inside again. He said, this is your passport. He, he, he said, that's it. He said, what happened? He said, you are fine. You are okay. I mean, he didn't know what they were saying. He couldn't open it. They were too scared. Five minutes. I mean, for all the form he has filled, all the trouble the day they gave him to come, five minutes just been answered. He now go outside and open the passport. <laughs> His hand trembling, you know, because he didn't know whether, whether they say reject or whatever. So he opened it and look at the beacon of what? Respect and pleasure came upon him and he said, this is serious. He was looking for two year visa he found indefinite stay stamped on the passport. Hallelujah. When he came back and he was shouting and screaming and stuff like that, I was just smiling. That is what glory does. It makes you to be respected. Everybody was on cue there. He was answered in five minutes. And in, after five minutes, he got what he did not expect. A pleasure that came from God. A two-year visa became an indefinite stay for him. Hallelujah. Amen. The glory also means your son to shine. Your son to shine. Have you heard people pray for you and say, your son will not go down? Have you heard that before? It's a big prayer. You need to shout a big amen when they say that to you. That your, your son will not go down. Which means your, your son will keep shining. And God will now become your son. Hallelujah. He's the one that will be making the, that brightness to come around you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory is important. Glory also means your greatness. God says he will increase your greatness and comfort you on every side. That's glory. He wants to put that glory upon you. Hallelujah. Everywhere you find yourself, you might be at a level that no, nobody expects you to be. You might be at a level, you know, that you didn't even expect yourself to be. You thought things can be better, you know, you know, in this life and etc., etc. Is it God rearranges things and brings somebody from the bottom and bring them to the top? He brings people from the back and put them in the front. He sets one down and sets one up. That is how God works when he wants to increase your greatness. That's what glory does. We are talking about we moving from glory to glory. We are talking about the weight of glory here. You might be going through a particular trouble in your life. The Bible saying the light affliction that we experience is but for a moment. But what is it doing? It's working something out in us. It's working in us. Look at somebody and say it's working in me. Say it's working. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's provoking me to be better. It's provoking me to be more learned. It's provoking me to be more versatile. It's provoking me to hunger more, to thirst more for righteousness, for the things of God, for better days are ahead. He's encouraging me, opening me up to build my capacity more. Hallelujah. Don't ever let anything you are going through in life ever suppress you. It must be a stepping stone to you being lifted up. Amen. They wanted to throw that, that, that horse into the, into, the, into, into the well. You know, the horse said, if they put me in this well, I'm going to die. You know, as they, as they carried the horse and they threw him into that well, my God, and they started filling the well with sand. As soon as they poured the sand, the horse would 
jump up and the sand will go down until eventually the horse saw himself standing on top of all the sand the sand has gone into the well but he was riding on top of the sand hallelujah he refused to be buried with the sand you get what i'm saying don't ever let the light affliction the trouble the mess things didn't go well you didn't have enough money to pay your bill you, you are having one affliction in your body. You know, but everybody say, you know, London will level you up. Everybody say all kind of nonsense to you. Please don't believe what they are saying. Believe the word of God alone. There's a glory that is here. Hallelujah. There's a glory of God that is here for us. Hallelujah. Believe what the Lord says. And then the trouble that you're experiencing, you become a stepping stone to a higher ground. Hallelujah because that weight of glory will suppress the trouble the affliction and the mess that we are experiencing and bring us to be on top i see you on top in the name of jesus i say i see you on top in the name of jesus i say i see you on top in the name of jesus i say i see you on top in the name of jesus now when we have received the understanding of this glory look at the look at some certain characteristics and things that can happen here that's why people experience light affliction which is but for a moment why number one the glory can depart from somebody when the glory departs it's a big problem don't sit down, be crying and crying. Search and find out why the glory departed and run back to God and say, God, I am sorry that this glory of my shining, of my beauty, of my greatness, of my honor, my dignity, of my eminence, of beacon of respect and pleasure have departed. God, show me your mercy. You see what that boy said there? He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Oh Lord, according to your faithful, uh, un, uh, unfailing love, and according to your great compassion, you need to you need to keep asking every day for the mercy of God. Don't just wake up and say and and say, well, the mercy of God woke us this morning. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. No, go back to God. His mercy has woken you up and say, Lord, show me mercy today. In all my endeavor, let me experience your mercy. Because when the glory departs, it's the mercy of God that we need so that God can get on our case. Hallelujah. I don't know why the glory departed, but it's you that need to search that out. Why did it depart? Maybe God asked you to do certain things, you didn't do it. Maybe you knew the right thing to do and you did not do it. Maybe you had a thought of foolishness in your heart and God just has been telling you and said, this thought is not going to help you. Knowing to do good and not doing him. Things are not of faith and you're experiencing it in your life. Go back to God and say, I don't know this glory. Bring it back to me. To depart means the glory went off it was withdrawn from us you can claim it back by the precious blood of jesus christ when the wife of often years you know was was in labor you know often Phineas and Phineas, they are the children of Eli, correct? Yeah, and they, they, were, they, were, they, they were breaking bad. They were behaving badly, men behaving badly. They did all kind of things, all kind of atrocity. It was a mess. Their father did not tell them of them. You know, their father was waxing old at that particular point in time, and he wasn't hearing from God again. He was so placid on the same spot, on the same level in his life that he affected his household completely. God withdrew honor from them and began to God despise them completely in everything that they did and that day they were in battle and they lost the battle they came home and told the man the man fell back on his chair the woman who is the wife of this man you know was to deliver Eli's grandchild had it broke into labor pang and pain the baby the boy was delivered he said what's your name he said Icabod Icabod means the glory of the parted us glory will not depart from your life the glory will be restored in jesus name lift your hand to god say father in the name of jesus by the blood of jesus i claim back my glory every glory that departed 
glory of my shining, of my beauty, of my dignity, of my mercy, God Almighty, of my preference, oh God Almighty, of my pleasure, glory by the blood, return back, I take you back, be restored back, be restored back by the blood of Jesus, 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 by the blood of Jesus. I experience love, I came back, I claim back, I claim back my glory, the glory of my family, the glory of my future, the glory of my destiny, the glory of my beauty, the glory of my shining, the glory of my virtue, the glory of my dignity, the glory of my honor, the glory of my beacon of respect and pleasure, I take back by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Number two, the light affliction we're experiencing, which is but for a moment, be as a result of diverted glory. A glory can be diverted. Yeah, it can be diverted. I mean, there was this woman, you know, who was sitting down the naming ceremony of this little boy, and they were naming it, and all of a sudden, the Lord opened the eyes of one of our pastors. This woman, they gave the baby to, sat down there, and they noticed that her right hand was rubbing the head of the baby. They thought it was, it was calming the baby down. And the Lord opened the eyes of the pastor and said, that woman is a witch. He is erasing the glory of the boy and diverting it somewhere else. He kept innocently held the baby and was doing like this. Innocent. You thought it was just pacifying the baby. Can you imagine that rubbish, evil, wickedness? And the man of God said, take the baby from her. And she said, what? He said, tell us what you are doing right now. He said, hey, we've seen a star so bright. And I've been asked to erase it and divert it. Can you imagine that? A late child, eight year, eight day old child who does not know anything. Now the glory being, being erased and diverted. Ah, God had mercy on that baby because of the destiny the child will fulfill. They, got, they took the baby from her, got her out of that place. She confessed her sins. My God, it was a mess completely. Which means glory can be diverted. That's why many people go into light affliction today. And we are addressing that. Oh, no, you know, you, 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 everything's supposed to be working well. You know, it suddenly was your turn. Everybody was getting it. The blessing was flowing. When it became your turn, they said, well, we are sorry the door is closed. How can it be only when you are there now? It's your turn. From now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every diverted glory must be restored back. Amen. Amen. It must be restored back. It must be restored back. To be diverted means the glory was torn aside. It was torn away or redirected to somebody else. Redirected to somebody else. We are taking back the glory by the Holy Ghost today. In Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. He said the body shall be removed from off your shoulder. And the yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? The anointing oil. That is it today. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. We are taking back the glory by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand to God. Say father. I can't hear you. Say father. In the name of Jesus. Every diverted glory of my destiny. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Now let with the yoke be destroyed. Let the glory be returned back to me. I take it back. I take it back. Come on, take it back. Take it back. Wherever it is. Take it back. Whoever has diverted it. I take back the glory. By the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by my power. Not by my mind. But by the spirit of the living God. I claim back my glory. I take it back. I take it back. The glory of my lifting. Glory of my honor. Glory of my dignity. Glory of my beauty. Glory of my shining. Glory of my preferred. My God, I take back my glory. I take the glory of my destiny back. Wherever it has been diverted to, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. 
in Jesus name we pray from today no one here will ever struggle for a job again you will not struggle to save money you will not struggle to prosper from today you will not struggle in any area we command the diverted glory by the power of the Holy Ghost to return back to you return back to your family return back to your house return back to your destiny in the name of Jesus number three this light affliction we're experiencing which is but for a moment but many people don't know it's for a moment can be as a result of a disarranged glory a disarranged glory a disarranged glory a disarranged glory like Esau that was despised when there's a disarranged glory there's despisement People get despised. They just for no reason. They are just despising you, mistreating you for no reason. I mean, you haven't done anything wrong. It's the wickedness of the wicked. It's called a disarranged glory. Can you imagine Esau who had everything good, mighty, firstborn, everything, things supposed to work well for him, but he loved food too much. Until his brother came and said, give me your bath ride. I need your bath ride. He said, what is bath ride? I am hungry. Give me food. He said, if I give you food, you give him my bath ride. Deal or no deal? He said, deal. He gave him food. He had. He said, what's bath ride? Take bath ride. He did not know in the spirit realm what he said was recorded. Because he said, the elder will serve the younger. A disarranged glory can be rearranged back. You get it? It can be rearranged back. I don't know, I don't know whether you are being despised, whether by a family member, by your colleagues at work, by the system that, that is in this country, whatever it is. When you're supposed to be honored and respected, I mean, they do for no reason. They, they, they just push you aside, just despise you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask for order to come to them. That God begin to rearrange every disarranged glory. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, 40, He said, Let all things be done decently and in order. Lift your right hand to God. Say, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we wherever i am experiencing being the despisement wherever I'm, my glory may be disarranged i declare by the power in the name of jesus a rearrangement a rearrangement a rearrangement of all this arranged glory let my glory of respect of honor of dignity of virtue of beauty to be preferred let it be restored back now let every disorder be removed now i command order in my family order in my destiny order in my life let every mess in my life become a miracle today in the name of jesus rise up the surrender glory be turned into order now rearrange your glory rearrange your glory rearrange everything done decently in order decently and in order everything done decently and in order in your destiny in your family in your career in your ministry in your business in your life everything done decently and in order by this anointing today we command the rearrangement of your destiny by this anointing today, we command order to come into your destiny. Order, 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 order. Every chaos, every mess we remove today. Order, order, order. Come into your life. Every combustible thing, things are operating up and down, things going up and down, haphazardly everywhere. We command in the name of Jesus. Order, order, order. Order your body system, order your heart, order your blood flow, order, order 
no more high blood pressure no more hypertension no more cholesterol bad cholesterol operating in anyone's body opera no more no more affliction opera in your body order from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet order in your liver in your kidney in your heart in your lungs in your womb in your stomach in your intestine in your particular column in your waist order in your brain order order in your bones and marrow order let there be order every chaos with silence order we command order in your destiny everything bringing opera everything speaking against your destiny we arrest them today and we say order let order let order come in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name it's like affliction that we experience which is but for a moment is working for us but it may be it may be being produced as a result of our glory being detained glory can be detained amen, amen. hallelujah do you understand what it means to detain something yeah you can't see the glory it's a supernatural thing it's a spiritual thing but it works it works possibly it works for good but when the glory is detained it means it is sentenced to a satanic detention satan has stolen it and locked it up somewhere so that it won't produce shining in you the beauty in you the honor in you the dignity in you the praise in you the finance in you your sun shining and bringing respect and pleasure brilliance glow the sparkle that you're supposed to experience in your life it's not there again instead of you shining and glowing you just see yourself being every time you are complaining of doom and gloom enough is enough enough is enough that glory that been detained in that satanic detention we are going there right now by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah i say we are taking it by force today we are taking it back by force today hallelujah i say we are taking it by force shall we say i'm taking it back by force now you begin to announce and say right now father say father in the name of jesus every detention camp that have detained my glory i break the lock i command holy ghost fire melt the padlock melt the lock i break the door i pull down their door the gates of brass the bars of iron i break down i cut in thunder are you praying somebody make sure you are not sleeping okay i hope you are praying this is a serious matter here today i break down the gates and I take back by the anointing my return glory I take it back come and take it back we are in the enemy's camp right now we bind the strong man and we take authority of every strong man that have detained our glory every strong man that have detained your glory we raise a standard against them we bind them in the name of Jesus we cast them to the heavens your glory be released take it back now take back your glory take back your glory take it back reach your put your hand out as you are reaching for it come on look at me look at me i take it back are you ready now say i take it back from wherever it has been detained i take back my glory i take it back the glory of my shining glory of my beauty glory of my finance glory of my joy Glory of my preferred, glory of my honor, glory of my dignity. I take back my beacon of respect and pleasure. Honor, I take back. I take it back. Come on, take it back. Take it back. Take it back. It's yours. It's yours. It must manifest. It must produce. It must work for you. It cannot be detained again. It must not be detained. Are you listening to me here? I take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. In Jesus' name we pray. I, I, there was 
a song sometime, maybe some people may not know. He said, going home to the high places. We're going home to the high places. We're going home to the high places. To get the devil. To tear you down, tear the devil's kingdom down. What he says are his has been ours all along. We're going to tear the devil's kingdom down. Everything, your righteousness, your glory that has been detained in the camp of the enemy, locked up in one place there, that I, that nobody even sees or know, but you just know this thing is not walking around you again. You know, it must be taken by. We're going to the devil's camp to tear the devil's kingdom down and take back our glory hallelujah yeah. taking it back amen and amen yeah. glory also can be stolen it can be stolen the thief has come to kill to steal and to destroy but jesus christ has come that we may have life and have it abundantly every spiritual satanic criminal we arrest them in jesus name yeah. Every robber of our destiny, we arrest them. We silence them to everlasting destruction today. We, we sentence them to the abyss right now. Let every spiritual criminal that have stolen our glory be arrested now. The Lord is the arrester. Begin to arrest them. Is the arrest of the arrest? I begin to arrest them. Holy Ghost, arrest every criminal that has stolen our destiny in the name of Jesus. Every robber of destiny, we arrest you now. In the name of Jesus, we receive life, abundant life, exceeding life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I think we just do one more and that will be it. Glory can also be dented. It's supposed to be beautiful and robust and good and glorious. It can be dented. You know, I've explained what glory is. It's supposed to be shining, doing great, being preferred. I mean, you enter a place and that virtue is seen upon you. You know, it's just a glory. Like that man that was in the shopping mall, he just discovered two people started following him everywhere. And suddenly he discovered. And then he will enter another store there. He saw them with the corner of his eye. Suddenly he entered another store, he now cornered them. I say, you have been following me. Why are you following me? That is the alarm. I think we need to stop there. He said, why are you following me? He said, when we left home, God told us that we should go to the shopping mall, that there will be a light, we should be following the light, wherever he stopped, that's a person that will pray for us, and the problem in our lives will come to an end. He said, but we have been seeing that light everywhere. That's why we were following it. And that's why everywhere you went to, we kept following you because there was this light. He said, light? He said, where? He said, it's on your head. He said, it's there. He said, can you see it now? He said, yes, that's why we're here. He said, so what do you want? He said, God said that you will pray for us and that will be the end of all the issues in our life. And he began to praise God. He began to thank God for this brightness, this, this, this light that was upon his head. They saw the physical light. And then he prayed for them, and that was the end of that problem in their life. Hallelujah. They, so the glory can be dented. To, the, when it's dented, the enemy wait for people until they have a testimony. When you have a testimony, then he now comes to attack you. Have you seen people after sharing testimony? You know, so I mean, everybody is happy we praise God with them the devil is also waiting because every next level he also come with a new devil I hope you know that you got a miracle today don't think that's the end no get ready to fight for the next level because the devil is coming to steal he wants to steal that testimony that's what happens when the glory is dented he's dented he, when you reach a great platform when you become somebody when god when you get god raise you up i've seen many people being raised up then suddenly they forgot to do what brought them to that place they became backsliders instead of praying for for one hour two hours now they are praying 10 minutes prayer and the devil is working 24 hours to destroy the testimony that's why glory gets dented why do bad things happen to good people 
glory stented. Why? 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 Arrows that are meant to, 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 to restructure everything. The enemy took the arrow to dent our glory. You are going to tell God finally right now. And because the Bible says in Psalm 91, if you read from verse 5 to 7, it says you, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, on the arrow that fly by day, on the pestilence that walk in darkness. Hallelujah. Not the destruction that lay at no day. He said the thousand will fall at your side. 10,000 at your right hand side but it shall not come near you with your eye you will see the reward of the wicked lift your hand to God say father in the name of our Lord Jesus every arrow meant to dent my glory let them begin to fail now. Begin to fail now. Begin to fail now. Expose them, Lord. Expel them, Lord. Expose the arrows. Expel the arrows. Expose the arrows. Expel the arrows. In the name of Jesus, right? With my eye, I shall behold and see the reward of the wicked. It will not come near me. 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 In the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Father. We praise your holy name. We praise your name, Father. Maka Pasoto Pralia. Come on, stand on your feet, everybody. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are already getting tired. You can't be tired now. You can't be tired. We are on the next level now. Higher level. You can't be tired. Meko pasuka tayara, embreke de keti kataba, makata pase kete prakadaba, membreke de kete pasuka te, embreke tika to paraga, rabasute le keti koto paria, embreke de kontom prakanta kaba. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Are you ready for this next level? Are you sure you're really ready? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 from verse 10 to 12, it said the axe is laid to the root of the tree. And every branch that is not bearing fruit shall be cut and put in the fire. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But there is one coming after me who is mightier than high, whose shoes I'm not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said the fan is in his, in his hands. He will, it will thoroughly purge his floor, collect the wheat into his own barn, and burn every chaff with unquenchable fire. That's what this oil wants to do now. That's what this oil wants to do now. Burn every chaff. Every chaff. Whatever the chaff is. You are the one that can define what that chaff is in your life. Things that are not letting your glory to shine. Things that are bringing depression, suppression, regression, backwardness, afflictions, hopelessness. That are bringing subtractions, bringing disorder, chaos, mess, prayerlessness, hopelessness, whatever it is. This anointing oil has fire in it. It's going to burn everything up, every child. And it's going to keep burning them until they are completely burnt out. It's called the unquenchable fire. Heavenly Father, release your fire. Release your glory into this oil now. We dedicate this oil to you. That this will no longer be an ordinary oil bought on somebody on one shop, shelf, but it will be a supernatural oil filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with fire, filled with anointing team burn every charm let the unquenchable fire be released burn high blood pressure burn sugar diabetes burn cholesterol burn brain disorder burn every dementia burn every every onset of arthritis whatever it is oh god burn every affliction every evil report burning up today oh god every 
Everything that is making door to close against anyone, burn them to the whole God. Everything in the life of anyone bringing disfavor, displeasure, today, burn it, law. Everything that is bringing evil cloud of glory to set upon somebody's house, home, marriage, family, destiny today, melt it, law. Burn it up, Father. Burn it up. Burn it up today, Father. Thank you, Father. We receive. We receive. Begin to tell God what you want Him to burn completely. Just tell Him now. Just tell Him now what you want Him to burn. He's going to burn everything with unquenchable fire, with His Holy Ghost and fire. They are Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Holy Ghost and fire. Burn everything. Burn every pain. Every Every ache, every affliction, every sickness, every ailment, oh God, poverty, degradation, hopelessness, lack of zeal for God, lack of passion for the things of God. Oh God Almighty, somebody is at a lower level right now. This anointing will burn everything in that place and raise you up. Your lifting has come, your being raised has come. It's a day the Lord has made, a day for a change of story, a day for a change of status. Something's about to happen. Something's about to change for somebody today. I come in the power of the Holy Ghost that God will change everything around you. He will remove disorder. He will remove hopelessness. He will bring order. Give you a new zeal, a new passion, a new desire, a new hunger, a new expectation, a new life in Christ. Oh, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Somebody's head today. 